say I enjoy one type of hunt over another would be a little misleading. I feel very fortunate any time I am able to be in the woods, weapon in hand, trying to outsmart these amazing creatures. But this year, I decided to focus the majority of my time and effort on an archery elk hunt. Knowing if I worked hard and spent the time, it would pay off. After hunting hard for seven straight days and missing on a couple close calls, we decided to head home and return later in the month. So we spotted this bull up on this knob. It's probably three quarters of a mile. There's three bulls in there and about six cows. So we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go stick an arrow in one, but I'm trying to keep the wind in our face, obviously. But they're just right up on this ridge. They're in the next little, little valley over the top of this. So we're gonna kind of work our way up, check the wind, because the wind changes on every one of these freaking ridges and, and get in the bottom, it changes. We're gonna get up there, get the wind in our favor, hopefully. Sound like right in here. This is the plan. We're gonna go have some fun because we're in freaking bugle and bulls and I, there's nothing funner than that, but. This big 360, 370 bull sticks his head out. We're gonna have lots of fun back at me.
haven't seen any elk up this area. We out here this morning, seen a lot of bulls. We watched half of his cows go right, and he never went with them. So we thought, this bull's gotta go left in this country, have not it? Sure as can be, Eric spotted him bedded. Got about an hour, so we gotta get over there. But dude, he's a giant. So it is the next morning, and uh, we're just headed out, headed in to go try to find him. So we, uh, I think we have a good feeling, you know, he's dead, without a doubt. We just got to go in and finish tracking him. And now it's light, 
Um, we're gonna find them. It's gonna be freaking rad. It will. not looking good. We uh, la shot him last night, decided to make the decision to leave him so he could go die, not us not bump him. It's kind of what we've always learned and it's kind of always what's worked. Came back in this morning, got on his tracks where we left him last night, started finding blood immediately, found eight or nine just big piles of blood, um, blood for about 300 yards that led to a bed with no elk in it. That's never a good sign. But we found a bed. There was quite a bit of blood in the first bed. He looked like he got up, moved to another bed, which there was zero blood after the first bed. Moved to another bed and uh, looks like he spent the night there. And uh, we think we might have bumped him this morning when we came in here. I mean, we gave him 12 hours basically to go and sit and die. I'm, yeah, I couldn't be, couldn't have been happier with his shot placement. If you drew an elk on the wall and told me to go point my finger right where I'd want to shoot an elk with a bow, that's exactly where I feel like I hit last night. I don't know, I'd have no idea what happened. I don't know why he didn't die. I mean, so frustrating. I take, killing an animal very, very serious. And I mean, I love to hunt and I love everything that comes with it. For me to think that I wounded an animal and he's out there roaming around is, it's heartbreaking. I'm either gonna find that bull dead, hopefully and can recover the meat, or I'm gonna find him that he's up and about and he's doing fine, or I'm done elk hunting. I mean, that's just kind of how I was raised. I'm not gonna go chase any more elk. I'm gonna find him or, or uh, I'll uh, notch my tag on him if, if, if I never do find him. So I'm just gonna try to keep positive and I think, who knows? We'll see what happens. I guess that's that. It's Sunday, three days after I shot that bull, and uh, can't turn him up. It's nowhere to be found. Eric helped me for a day and a half, and then he had to go, and we looked. We went back to the original, original blood and tried to find a different area we thought he might have went. Tried to follow tracks, and the only tracks that we could confirm we thought were him were headed towards the, towards the creek, and you lose them after that. And uh, so we just, I mean, my GPS, just, just looking at the tracks on my GPS and we have scoured every single one of these canyons, just gridded it into the grid system and went back and forth, me and Eric for a day and a half. He had to go home and I've been doing the same for the last day and a half. I actually came up here on this hill so I could glass this morning and see if I couldn't see him up and about or dead somewhere. So you can see all this country, but That's it. Oh, 
Holy cow. You guys want to talk about a roller coaster? I've said it before, it's the highest of highs and the lowest of lows is, is elk hunting to me. Check this out, I can't even talk. I got back to my camp about a half an hour ago, got into some dry clothes, got something to eat, decided I was gonna drive down the road to where I got service and text my wife and tell her that I was coming home and look at this text I just got. Are you kidding me? Is this real? That's him. That's the bull I've been looking for for the last three days. So basically what happened was I met a kid up here while I was hunting earlier this year. I got his number. He got mine. We were keeping in contact with each other. He watched me shoot the bull from up on the ridge. We talked. He knew I couldn't find him and he had to leave yesterday. He had also met another guy up here hunting. And uh, this guy was hunting down low on the private property. Well, this guy, I guess, somehow got word that somebody found this bull down on the private property, texted Dane, and they have the bull. They found him. I didn't get the whole story. Uh, I called him real quick. Um, I'm going to get the bull. They found him Saturday, Saturday afternoon. <sighs> I asked him if they had the meat, and he didn't know if the meat was still good. He didn't ask him that. Friday. I sh I don't know. I'm praying the meat's still good. I'm praying they packed the meat out. Um, ah, it'd be a bummer if they didn't. If they, it was bad. Um, I'm praying they have the meat. Um, but they found him Saturday afternoon. And that's why I couldn't find him. That's why we couldn't find him. Oh my gosh. He jumped the fence. I didn't have permission to go on the private property. He jumped the fence and died, they said. And we walked that fence. Me and Eric had walked that fence. And we just didn't, we thought if there was a bull down there, we'd see him for sure. And they said he was just in a spot you couldn't see from the fence. And it's, it's so funny how, how this works out, how everything works out. I feel, I always feel like things happen for a reason. There's a learning lesson to be taught and it hasn't come to the surface yet in this. I don't know what else I could have done. I'm just happy to have the conclusion of the story. It broke my heart not knowing what, what happened, if the bull died, if he was okay. And to have closure, know that he did die. And, I mean, there's nothing more we could have done. I mean, I guess I could have got went and tried to get permission to get on the private, but... Oh, I'm just so thankful. And I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's done. It's done.